We're going to introduce the complex exponential function right now. Hey everyone, it's Brian. Welcome back to the Complex Analysis video series. In this episode, we're talking all about the exponential function, rather the complex exponential function. And it's sort of in the form you would expect. So it's e to the z, right? Just like the real exponential function is e to the x for real numbers, the complex exponential function is e to the z, remember where z is x plus i y, a complex number. And here it is, this is, um, I don't know, maybe it's what you expect and maybe it's it's not, but all it is, it's the real exponential function e to the x times the quantity cosine y plus i sine y. And if you're wondering about just where this is coming from, I have a video right here. You can check out a little bit of the background in case uh, you've had some experience with calculus too. So what's really interesting is that you'll notice that this piece right here, the cosine y plus i sine y, that's exactly the part of the polar form of the complex number that you're used to dealing with. And this leads us into the exponential form of a complex number. Up to this point, you've become familiar with the polar form of a complex number that says any complex number z can be written in the form r, which is the modulus of z, times cosine theta plus i sine theta, where theta is the argument of that complex number. But now that we know the complex exponential function, I can rewrite this part as just e to the i theta. And now we have yet another form, so this is the exponential form of a complex number, which is just r, the modulus of that complex number, times e to the i theta. Let's do some evaluation of the exponential function. Here I'm just going to evaluate the complex exponential function at a few points. So here, 0. And I just remind you that 0 means 0 real part and 0 imaginary part. And then I just apply the definition of the exponential function, which is e to the real part times cosine y plus i sine y, y being the imaginary part. In this case, they're both 0. Well, e to the 0, any real number to the 0 power is 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. And hey, there you go. e to the 0 is 1. Isn't that nice? That's what you kind of want from an exponential number. Now, e to the i pi, that's one of the most famous identities in all mathematics. Let's see why. If I apply this definition, this is really e to the 0 plus i pi, which means this is e to the 0 times cosine of pi plus i sine of pi. Well, e to the 0 is 1. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Sine of pi is 0. So this is just negative 1. e to the i pi equals negative 1. Another way of saying that is e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. This is also known as Euler's identity. And wow, could you ask for like a, a better compact equation? You have e i pi 1 and 0, arguably the five most important constants in all mathematics, wrapped up ni nice, and, uh, nice and neat in one equation. I mean, that's just... That's just great, isn't it? So I'll just wrap up with some properties of the exponential function. We already saw that e to the 0 is 1. That's nice. That kind of carries over from real analysis. We also have the familiar properties of exponents, such that if I multiply the like bases, I add exponents. If I divide like bases, I subtract exponents. An exponent to an exponent, you multiply those exponents, so long as this exponent is in the integers. We also have an interesting thing that the complex exponential function is periodic with period 2 pi i. So in other words, uh, e to the z plus 2 pi i k, that's just e to the z itself. So that really comes down to the fact that this exponential function is made up of sines and cosines, which have period of 2 pi. And this is fairly easy to show using the definition. In this episode, we introduce the complex exponential function. I hope you'll join me next time where we'll talk about complex function as maps. If you're enjoying this series, please subscribe and have a great day.